Hey everyone, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you tonight on Live with Prima. Uh, we're going to be doing this cute little canvas bag using some Julie Nutting stamps and the um, watercolor confections, the new watercolor confections by Prima. So first thing I want to do is go over the announcements. Let me pull those up on my phone and... Um, Next show is going to be a Treasure Magnetic Album with Frank. That's Tuesday, March 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. See the Prima blog today for a glimpse of his project. That's prima.typepad.com. Also live with Prima Mini Show tomorrow with Sharon Lockinen. Uh, she's going to be doing some blooming Easter eggs uh, using the Prima Water Bloom using the Prima Bloom Sprays to create marvelous marbled effects on Easter eggs um, in just minutes. So check that out tomorrow, Friday, the March 25th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, don't forget about Art Venture Seaside uh, event. It's a quaint, exclusive event. will take place in Coronado Beach, California, with three amazing instructor, instructors, I'm going to talk properly tonight at some point, Anna Dabrowska, John Peterson, and Debbie Anderson, and they're like showing their projects, so y'all take a look at that at primamarketinginc.com. Uh, go there to sign up or contact Denny at Denny at primamarketinginc.com. Uh, you can email him there, so going to go ahead and move on. We've got um, got a little bit to cover tonight. I have worked ahead to try to uh, spare you some of the drying time because this little bag does take a little bit of time to dry. But you can see I've done just a watercolor effect on the, the bag itself. I've stamped. I've added some trim and uh, just a few flowers. So moving this, let's give you a little peek at it. Um, just kind of see how it looks it's really cute it's got three pockets in the front I got this bag at Hobby Lobby um, for like four or six dollars I can't remember not very much but it holds quite a bit you could use it for your dolls uh, scrapbook supplies um, could be a small little beach carry bag for lotions and different things anyway books lots of different things you could carry in this so I'm going to put it to the side and show you I've worked ahead. You see this bag has already been colored. I used um, Color Bloom Spray Soft Teal to color it. The number, and you can see the bottle's about empty. Um, the number is somewhere, number 573782. And what I did is just at first I took a spray bottle and saturated the bag. Um, I got it pretty wet. That's why I didn't really want you to have to, to watch me dry the thing. So I put it in front of a fan to dry. And um, I just continued to spray it all over until I got it pretty covered in color. You can see there's sort of variations of dark and light, which I like. It gives it that watercolor effect, too, since it's going to be finished off with watercolors. So um, you can use the um, soft teal or... Any color that you like. You just need a kind of a light background color. Glistening waves would work. Sorry, they're falling in the floor. Um, but glistening waves would work. You could use a couple of colors. You could do a pink background, yellow background, whatever you want to do. Um, next thing I'm going to do is add the watercolor confections. And I'm not locating my packaging, Carrie. If you've got that number uh, this is the classics set that I'm going to be using and um, these are awesome if y'all have not tried these if you don't have them you need to add these to your stash they are so concentrated the pigment is so concentrated that these little blocks will last you forever um, it seems like a little bit but it is tons of color so um, if you don't have them you need them so what I'm going to do is just in my little well here, and you can see you've got you've got this little well area here, and you've got this little area here that you can do the mixing of your color and adding your water and that kind of stuff. So it's really, really cool for that. So I'm working on the pocket side. So you can see I've got the pocket side 
that I'm working on because I want my little pockets here decorated. So what I'm going to do is start with the yellow. I've got this teal base. I'm trying to situate this so you can kind of see it all. Um, maybe I'll move it over this way a little. Don't want my paintbrushes to roll off in the floor, but I'm going to need a couple of sizes. So how is that? Did that get everything in there? Yeah, I think that works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just get my brush pretty wet with color, with water, sorry, pretty wet. Saturate your brush really good, and then I'm going to dip it into the yellow. And the water kind of runs to the back here, so I'm going to do the mixing kind of up at the top. So I have a little bit more concentrated color. You could mix all that in water, but you're not going to get nearly the concentration. And what I'm going to do is just with this large fin paintbrush, this is the one inch paintbrush, I'm just going to start kind of dabbing the color in. And I want it, I want it pretty, pretty dark. So I'm going to, I'm going to add water and kind of saturate as I go as well. So I'm just going to kind of mix it right now and add the water on top of where I just put that pretty concentrated color. I'll kind of spread it out and that kind of stuff. So, and this is, of course, watercolor. So, I'm finding that no project is exactly the same. The water just kind of tends to move it around a bit. And that's okay. It does not have to look exactly the same. I like that it's the very varying kind of shades that it creates. And you're going to go through quite a bit of water. So just keep your spray bottle close and continue to mix kind of at the top for a more concentrated color. I like the idea of the yellow and the teal. And I want to keep this area right here kind of vacant of color. I'm going to add some because I'm going to do the stamping here. And I want it to appear to be a little scene with the girl's stamp there. So just continue. I'm just dipping and... I like the idea of just kind of dipping the brush in, kind of damp, and then adding the more concentrated color as well. This is just kind of layering this up, then grab your water and just blend it. Just kind of, you tell I'm just kind of blending it in. Get those lines out of there by just blending. I just want the color. And what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to give it a good spray. Just going to kind of get this started on the outside of my bag, kind of where I want the the color kind of moved all around so that we can move pretty quickly with this. Not taking a lot of pains because um, it just kind of looks pretty however you do it. So just continue to move the color. Grab a little more concentration by not dipping it in water, just a kind of a wet brush. You see how you get a little bit more dark color by doing that. This These colors are so vibrant that um, it's just very, very easy. Give it another spray and just continue to kind of spread that out. Just kind of move your brush around and blend that in. Okay, then what I want to do is just kind of give it a good spray with the bottle. And it's going to kind of spread out. Kind of like it kind of spreading out. So I want to add some to the bottom here. Mix it with a little water. Get a little bit down here at the bottom. You can see I am taking no pains with this. Again, I'm going to kind of give it a spray just to get that to kind of spread out. Spray it over here. Just get that color moving around. Still kind of working on the yellow for now. I'm going to add a little bit just to the top of the bag here. Just kind of have it meet just a little there. And you're gonna, it's kind of a it's kind of a mystery exactly how it will look until it's kind of dry. Once the once the water stops kind of moving around and 
it dries, you're going to have lighter and darker um, spots kind of in it. And, and again, that's the watercolor look. So that's that's what you want. Okay, so you can see we've got the, the yellow pretty much all around. I want to get a little more here at the top of the bag. Going to add a little on the actual straps. So just grab your color and your water. If you get a little green in as I just did, don't worry about that. It's totally okay. Just keep kind of dabbing. You just want watercolor kind of all around with the yellow. I'm going to move on to a different color in just a second. So that's about it. That's what you want with the yellow. I'm going to give it a little spray right here. So that'll kind of move around. Give your straps a little spray. Just kind of tap that water in. Okay, now we're going to move on to dryer wells here. And we're going to move on to an orangey color. Add our water. Wet your brush. Grab the orange. And you're just going to kind of mix that into, just kind of work that in. If you want it a little darker, just have the wet brush and just kind of work it in. You can add a little water on top of it to move that around. You see how that moves when you add the water? Just keep that moving. Okay, and you can see I kind of kind of probably added a little too much water. I want a little more orange to show, so I'm going to go back with my brush and I'm going to add some more orange. And you can add any color you want if you prefer um, the green or a purple or more pink or whatever whatever you want to add. You just feel free to add it. I'm doing each bag a little differently. I'm going to go up the up the strap just a little here. Each of my bags seems to be colored just a little differently, but I just wanted to be sure I got the color kind of moved all around. Add a little at the bottom. It does actually bleed through, um, but you have layers to the inside here. And so it's not going to necessarily bleed through to the back. You can see on the sides it is a little bit. But we're going to go back in a minute. We're going to add some color just around the outside edges. Um, so it really doesn't bother me if it were to bleed through more. You can just then work on the back and add that same color to the back. Um, you could add water back there to lighten the color. Um, lots of different things you could do if you don't like the color there. You can see here... I felt like I got a little too much of the orange up in there, so by spraying it with water, I diluted it enough that I'm pulling that orange away, and it's turning back to the more teal color. So it's really forgiving. You, you've got time while it's wet to move it around. The water reactivates it so that it is um, movable, and you're not left with one particular color so you can you can change it you know you can change it up a little bit get a little orange here in the center okay now I want to want to add a little color clean my brush off just a little bit here I'm going to leave my little orange well there and I'm going to add a little water on this side because I want to grab now actually I want to grab a smaller brush let's grab this half inch brush get a little water and I want to grab some pink just a little pink and I want to get a little puddle of pink but I want it pretty concentrated so I want to keep it up at the top and what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of let it kind of spread if I kind of just touch the brush with the concentrated amount on my brush then you can see because it's so saturated it's just kind of spreading out and I'm just kind of Kind of letting it do its thing. If you can kind of see that it's just it's just spreading. Since the fabric is kind of saturated pretty good at this point, it's just it's just sort of spreading out as I touch my brush to the canvas. But I've got it pretty saturated, so um, 
that's helping. You can't do that when it's dry. The colors do not need to be heat set. No, they dry. Um, you can do a, a, a spray fixative on this um, if you want. I have not done that with my bag, and the color is not coming off. It is. It seems to be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty permanent on there. But you could always seal it with a, with a sealer. Um, you could give it a good spray with some inexpensive hairspray. But for the most part, mine have not been sealed, and I am not having a problem with it coming off on my hands or on anything else. So. I think it's pretty good. I think the color is staying, you know, pretty good. So, um, just still want to kind of move this pink around in a few areas. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little water. I'm going to make a pretty, pretty nice saturated brush here. And I'm going to use my other brush and I'm just going to tap this pink on. I want some splotches of this pink. I want to kind of keep this inside portion here a little clear. If you happen to hit there, that's totally okay. But you can see, I just want, I'm going to do it on my handle as well. It helps to kind of tap with this harder, harder brush. But you can see, I just wanted that, a little bit of those pink um, splotches there. What do I call, splatters, whatever they're called. Okay, so now I'm going to clean this brush off, and I'm going to go back to my large brush. I want to cover a little bit more of the top of this with some yellow. So let's add a little more water. Grab the yellow. It's going to have a little green mixed in with it, but that's totally okay. You're going to see it's mostly yellow. And I'm going to go back in here and add more. Okay, my, I'm getting like double notifications for my phone um, for the questions. So sorry about y'all hearing my phone go off. Okay, so that's about what I want on this side. You can continue to add. I'm going to add a little more orange here kind of up in the, on the handle there. I'll add a little water to get that moving. My idea was to have the yellow, the orange, and the pink kind of all together here. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I want to grab the orange and get a little orange on the handle. I've already splotched a little bit of the pink, but no right or wrong way to do this either. Just add it. I just want the color. just like the watercolor effect. So... That is about what I did to the bag. So you can see um, I have a bag that I have finished that's already dried because I knew you were not going to want to watch me dry it. But let me show you real quick what I'm going to do to the back. When you've got it finished on the front, turn it over. You can see that it has kind of seeped over on the back. All you're going to do is just add your water again. You've got a little bit of the orange and the yellow here together. Just kind of mix those up. Whatever is on your paintbrush. Just kind of mix that up and go around the outside edges. I'm going to lift this up a little bit and get a little under so that the edges are pretty finished. And this just makes it look like you meant to have that bleed to the other side. So you can see this is already pretty done over here. I just want to kind of move it around at the bottom. Just continue to move it. It's just no big deal, and it's fun to me. I just, I really had, I really had a good time just kind of smearing the color on. Um, if you want to saturate the bag and let the colors blend more on their own, if you want a, a really true watercolor effect, letting the colors just kind of move and do their own thing, um, just saturate your bag pretty good you can see I'm going to give you a quick show I'm just going to spray this really good in this corner and I'll show you see how that water's moving on its own it's kind of moving across what you're going to do is grab your yellow pretty concentrated and just touch just kind of touch and it's so saturated it's going to move on its own just add a little more water and you can see it's just going to kind of do 
It's going to kind of do its own thing. I was being a little more precise on the other side because I want to stamp. But you see, it just kind of does its own thing. Add a little here. Grab a little orange. Make sure that's really saturated. And just touch. Just touch. This is my favorite way, I think. My favorite look because it's not on purpose. It's more of a, of a natural movement onto the fabric and it just looks really cool and it dries really really cool in person it doesn't really circle bad sometimes when the water spreads out like this you may get a few circle lines and things like that that doesn't bother me if it does bother you go to where the cut where the wet ends and just touch it with a little color and we're just going to kind of play around with our back here since um this is the back side and we can just touch that area with a little bit of color and you're going to it's going to not leave that you won't look like you have a ring you're going to look like you on purpose have that color there so it, it helps if you don't like the circling because you can see adding the adding the wet you're getting that outside line that could dry you know and leave that little bit of line so just go in with color and just disguise it just like so and you could fill that all in if you wanted to you don't have to um, because of course you do have the teal color underneath that's going to show through and um, anyway that's the way you can kind of fix that if you don't like those those watermarks so um, that is that's pretty much all that I did to color the bag so you can see when it dries that's pretty much the colors you're going to have and um, then we're going to do our, our stamping. So I'm going to lay this one to the side and let it dry. I just put it in front of a fan. Um, it would take a very long time to actually heat set one dry. So um, I more recommend putting it in front of a fan to dry it. So I'm going to dry up my, my little confections here and my pad. Move my water over. I don't want to lose all my stuff, so let me get this area straightened up just a little bit. I'm going to clean off my brush just for a second. The water confections come off really easy, so but I just want to be sure I do it before I add a color to something that I didn't mean to. It's hard to see, so got that done. I've dropped one of my brushes. Let me grab one of my brushes that I'm going to need in a minute. Okay, so get all this out of the way. Spend, spend a minute getting it straightened up. And this is what we have. I have one all dried and ready. So you can see, and these are the kind of the circle marks that I'm talking about. You see how that water came out and left that little bit of a circle there? I don't mind that. I just think it's part of the watercolor feel to this so it doesn't bother me. But um, I could have gone back in and blended that in with the teal, uh, and that would have totally done away with that. I don't mind it, so I left it. But if you if you don't like it, you are certainly welcome to move it. Um, same thing here. This is actually still kind of wet. That will dry. You may get a few circles, but if it bothers you, blend it out. Uh, but you can see I've gone around with the yellow. I've done the handles just a little bit on these handles. And um, anyway, this is this is dry and ready for me to stamp. So moving on to my stamps, the first thing you're going to want to do is take a piece of cardboard or foam, anything like that. Cardboard works pretty good, kind of cut to size. This came in a paper pack to prevent it from bending, so it doesn't have to be really thick. You just want something inside your bag so that you, you're going to get a good, clean stamp. So I'm going to place this, and you want it to go all the way to the bottom of your bag. I cut this so that it would fit in there pretty good. So I made sure before we, we got started that this was going to fit. Um, you just want to be sure that you've got a flat enough surface that when you stamp, you're going to get a really nice clean image. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you my stamps. And I'm using the Julie Nutting card stamps. 
I'm using number 910532. This is Sunshine. And I'm just going to be using the little girls. I'm not going to be using the accessories. You could if you wanted to add more to the bag. I'm just going to use the girls. This is Party Girl, number 910495. This is Love Day, number 910716. And this is Mama's Day, 910723. And just a little hint of how I've kind of done my stamps to keep them with the packaging. When you get the stamps, you get two pieces of um, the, the acrylic to add your stamps to. I put them together with the stamps inside, and you can see I added a few staples in the corner. Stapled both pieces down, so it sandwiches my stamps. And I don't have to deal with taking them in and out of packaging and all that because that gets cumbersome. But they are inside here. They stay clean. And I always know which doll goes with which name and which number. So just a little hint of how I take care of my packaging. Okay, I have a small, um, I have a small acrylic block. Uh, Prima does have a couple of acrylic blocks. For this project, I wanted kind of a thin one uh, so that I wasn't having to worry about where I was actually stamping it at. So I am using a... Um, a different Prima block but um, if you have Primas it will work any any block will work but this one just it's a little bit easier for me to handle with these little babies so start off with Love Day she's gonna go right in this area so what you want to use is a permanent archival ink let me find my ink you want to use an archival permanent ink be sure that that you do that because we're gonna we're gonna use more color on these and we do not want the color to bleed. So what I'm going to do is just ink her up. And you want to be sure you ink her up really good. Try not to, to, to squeeze it really hard and get it off the image. Because actually uh, stamping this onto fabric, um, you, might, you might get what you get in there. So if you do get any off the image, be sure to kind of clean that up with a q-tip or something like that before you stamp so what i'm going to do is just place her in this area somewhere here about here in this area and i'm going to just lay her down and hope for the best you get one chance to do this thing so um pretty good image can you see that it's a pretty good image so I like that okay. So we're going to move her off. And I will go back and clean her in a few after the show is over. So this one is finished. Next, let's do Sunshine. Take her out. Add her to the block. I don't want to be off camera. Add her to the block. I've got this. I feel like close tonight but I want you to be able to see what I was doing stamp her up you can see she's not real clean obviously I did not clean her well after the last time I used her so let's stamp her up really good and then we are going to add her I want to kind of stagger these up and down because I want them to appear to be kind of standing back behind one another so let's stand let's add her a little higher than the other one about right here Give it a really good press. I wish I could read the chat to see what y'all are talking about, but I am not that talented. Okay, that's a pretty good image, too. You, it's, my lighting is not helping you to see, but these are stamping pretty good. So let's move her. See, I like the packaging like this because I just kind of put it back in there and it's all together. It's really quick. I would normally clean them, but... Um, not doing that right now. I'm not going to take the time. I want to. I want us to get through this without me keeping you all night. So, add ink to her. This is Mama's Day. I like that it's Mama. I called my Mama Mama, and I like that my children call me Mama. I thought it was a Southern thing, but these dolls were not made in the South, so other people say Mama. Okay, I want to move her down kind of low. These are kind of up high. 
I'm going to move this one down kind of low and just be sure to give it a really good and I'm afraid I might have gotten off of my cardboard so I'm going to pull that up just a little bit to be sure I get all of that shoe in there okay that's a really good stamp as well so you can see just staggering these makes them appear to be kind of standing in different parts of a of a field or something let's put her back and next we're going to use party girl this block is just barely wide enough for these so the prima block is wider and gives you a little bit more room to move these around i'm having to be really careful but um I thought for the show this would work really good. Just stamping her up. And she's going to be moved over just a little bit kind of by herself with her balloons. My computer keeps going black at her right about here. Give her a really good press. And that's why I wanted to be sure my cardboard went all the way across so that I got all three of the or all four of these in here. Okay, there you go. There she is. So there's your image, your images. Let's put these back in their little packaging so we know who they are. Okay, close all this up. We are finished with the ink. We are finished with our block. Okay, now the fun starts. What I'm going to do is leave this cardboard here because I'm going to do really concentrated color and I really don't want this to transfer to the back. I don't want just spots of color on the back. So leave your cardboard where it's at and you'll want to grab a small paintbrush and this is, I'm going to see if I can find a, a um, thin brush that's pretty small. That one's pretty small. Get your watercolor confections back out. Open them up. What time have we got? I think we're good on time. We don't have we don't have much more to do. So I'm going to spray a couple of little pools of water in my little well there. And you're just going to kind of color your clothes and you're coloring your hair. What I want to do first is go in and color the hair. So the first thing I'm going to do with this little girl, she's going to be a little different than our first girl. I'm going to color her hair, um, let's color her hair a red color. I like red hair. My grandbaby has red hair. So, And what you want to do is be sure that your brush is not too wet because this is going to spread when you touch this because um, these are small areas that you're working with. And if you want to stay in the lines, I suggest you tap your first little color off on your paper towel and then go to the center and see what kind of spreading is going to happen. Just kind of see. So just kind of give it a touch right in the center. And watch what, what spreading is happening. So I'm going to let it kind of do its thing. And then I'm going to go in with a little water. I'm going to go in and saturate my brush. And I'm going to go in with a little water. See how that spreads? touch it and it and it spreads so you don't want to go all the way to the outside edge with your color and again this is watercolor so if you do happen to go outside the line going outside the line a little does not bother me uh, because it is watercolor but if you don't like it let it dry and then take your take your brush uh, dip it in water and along that outside edge where it's it's drifted add some water and it will pull that color it'll push that color I should say back to her head area and back into her hair kind of away from kind of away from the outside line you see how concentrated that is how much color and I've just barely touched but I want to get that wet to kind of blend that in the color is so concentrated just want to be sure I'm blending and all I'm doing is going back with grab a little clean water and go back in with a little clean
and you can always dab it with your paper towel if you've gotten too much color and what I'm going to do is to kind of tone this down I'm just going to continue to kind of splotch it it's hard to tell until it's totally dry the look that you've got because the water kind of spreads to the outside this is looking really good to me I think it's going to dry really nice so I'm happy with that right now so I'm going to dry up my paint or my red here and I'm going to spray a little more water and move on to some to some brown I want to add a little brown hair to my girls here so just kind of touch it on the outside this little lady has a little headband so I'm gonna be careful not to get it on her headband you'll want to use a really thin brush for this And again, I'm not taking huge pains with this. I kind of know kind of the direction I'm going. So I'm going to use a little brown and I'm going to mix it with a little white to make a little, a little, um, okay. And what you do here when you see this, you see I've gotten, since the brown is so concentrated, I've covered my white. What you want to do is add water, clean your brush off. Clean your brush off and add a little water to your to whichever well you've gotten the color in that you don't want mixed there. I want to go in first and grab a little white. Should have grabbed the white first and mix that with the brown, making a lighter color brown. These are able to be mixed and so we're going to give her a little bit lighter color brown hair and I'm going to tone this down in the center of her hair just a little bit so you can see get her bangs a little and she's got hair kind of flowing down here and I'm just touching I'm just I'm just kind of tapping the color on doesn't have to be totally covered um, if you just kind of hit the high spots, that's totally fine. I'm going to give our little girl on the end here kind of a dirty blonde color hair. So I'm going to mix some yellow and a little bit of the brown together. And again, I'm just touching. Just touching. The hair was the most tedious part to me because it was kind of the smallest area to um, to color but I just didn't take a lot of pain so you don't have to either dry this up I'm going to go back in after I've cleaned my brush off a little bit and grab some white not liking this dark in her red here I'm going to add a little a little white there to kind of Tone that red down just a little bit. And again, when this dries, you can kind of play around with it. And go back in with the red just a little bit. And kind of touch that just to tone that down just a little bit kind of like so and it's really wet on the outside that's going to kind of dry and you'll see so what we're going to do now is move on to their to their clothes and this little girl we're going to give her a we're going to give her a pink dress I'm just touching it I'm gonna grab the water not putting a huge amount of color just touching it in a few places with color and then moving that around not even gonna worry about getting it all the way to the outside I don't want it to get into her skin 
So I'm just going to kind of give it more of a shadow effect of color for her clothes. using a lot of water here with just a little bit. The pigment is so strong that I don't want a lot of it. Let's give her a little bit of an orange skirt on this. Just kind of touch it. Looks like she's wearing a little orange crinoline and I'm just barely touching this. Not worried about covering the whole thing. Just a little water and a little, a little color goes a long way can see just about like that then what I'm gonna do is go back in with a few dots of the orange and just give her dress a little pattern can you kind of see that I didn't cover the whole thing I'm gonna touch a little pink just a little bit more of the pink Maybe in this area here. And then touch the orange for another little. And I just wanted to give the dress just kind of a pink and orange kind of pattern. So you can kind of see right up on her shoulder here. Add a little bit more color just for a little shadow. Okay. Her shoes, we are going to give them a little bit of a brown. Just barely touch it because it's going to spread, so I'm just going to get the color right there in the center of her little shoes. Just barely tapping that. And I'm using the, I don't know what size brush this, the, I guess it's zero. It says it's got a zero on it. So... And you can kind of see on this one, I'll kind of show you, it kind of went out a little bit more than I wanted it to. So I'm going to really saturate my brush, clean my brush off really good and saturate it. And I'm just going to touch the outside of that fabric with the water and it's going to make that color bleed back in. Can you hold the girl up close? Yes, I can. See her? See her? And she's not dry. So when she dries, her hair is going to really calm down. And her dress is going to be just kind of highlighted more than all over colored. I just want to kind of highlight them. If you can kind of see that. Okay, let's color her balloon. I think we'll make her balloon blue this time. So let's grab the blue color. And again, right in the center, I'm just going to start to see how it spreads. Oh, our blue may not show up real good since we since we have the blue background. So let's let's grab a little of the darker the darker blue there. And again, we're just kind of going to go on the inside. Don't go all the way to the outside edges because it's going to continue to kind of bleed out. And I'm just going to highlight it a little bit on the outside with this darker blue color. Just kind of mixing that in a little bit. Just touching. And now I want to just kind of get these little these little pieces here. And that's about it as far as what I'm going to do to the balloon as well. I want to add a little more water to get that kind of spreading around. When it dries, our line on the inside is going to show up more from our stamping. So while I've got the blue going, I'm going to Add a little bit over here on our our girl here, just on her little tie around her dress. I just want to accent that little tie. Add a little water. Okay, and then let's, I want to do a little orange on her dress here. So let's just kind of on the inside, adding the orange. I'm just going to kind of do the same thing at the bottom of the dress. 
not going to go all the way out to the edge. I'm going to add some concentrated color and then just go in and dab some water. When it's wet, it looks different than when it dries. So you need, maybe you want to practice on one to kind of see um, when it's dried, the different effects that you get. Because I'll show you from the original bag, you can see how, once it, you see how I didn't go all the way out to the edge, but you see how it just, it just works for your bag. You can kind of see, even with the shoes, not exact, but it works. Okay, so that one, that's pretty much, I'm going to add a little more of the darker pigment, just a little bit more on the, her dress, just on her skirt. But when it dries, you will only see it. You will only see it more up in here. The rest of this will kind of dry the same color as the bag. So that's what we're going to do there. Let's dry up our wells here and add some more water. Let's go to a different color. I'm going to grab this green. For a girl here, dab a little bit of that off. For a girl here, we're going to add a little green to her little apron. I'm just going to kind of dab it in. This is not, it's not supposed to be exact. It's supposed to be a little messy. Um, that's sort of the beauty of the watercolor. It's not a perfect, um, oh, it's so funny. I don't know what I said, but my, my phone, Siri thinks I'm talking to her. This phone cracks me up. I want to add a little more water here. I want to grab some of the red. A little bit of the red. And I'm just going to kind of touch. She's got a little ruffle on her sleeve. And she's got a little ruffle at the bottom of her skirt. So I'm just going to touch that with a pretty concentrated bit of the red. Just around. And then what I'm going to do is take some water. Clean my brush. Clean up our wells. I think I need a dry paper towel. Saturated that one. Let's dry up our wells. Add just a little clean water. And what I'm going to do is just kind of fan this color up by just wetting right next to the little ruffle. Just and pulling it kind of up. So when it dries, you're going to get a little bit of that red kind of moved up into the dress. And I'm going to do this, the little sleeve area the same way. Just kind of just with the water, just drag that up. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do there, except right around her collar. I'm going to add a little bit of the red as well. And it's going to kind of bleed. Just kind of let it do whatever it does up in that area. Just to kind of highlight the top part of her dress. And then just take your water and just kind of kind of just let it go where it goes kind of like that and I know when it's wet it's really hard to tell but I'm just going to kind of fan a little bit more of this up it's kind of really hard to tell while it's wet how it's going to look when it's finished but you can see it dries a little lighter so you can kind of see on her dress you see how she's going to dry Just about like that. Okay, and then our last girl down here. Let's stand this up so I can see what I'm doing. Our last girl down here. We're going to give her a few polka dots. And we're going to mix some. We're going to mix some white. Grab that white. Good bit of that white. Get that, get that white really moving around. Grab a little bit of that pink and kind of mix those together. It's going to be a really light pink color. We're going to just, again, she's got a little ruffle. We're going to dab this color to the bottom of her dress. Just touching that ruffle. Just go all the way down, just touching that ruffle. 
She doesn't take a whole lot of color for these. And trust me, they do not have to be perfect. This is not perfect coloring. This just gives a little bit of a of a hint to kind of to kind of just shade in their clothes more than actually trying to color them perfectly. Grab a little bit of the darker pink. Let's dab out our white. Grab a little of the darker pink. She's got a little heart right here that I'm going to color in. Just kind of dab that on there. Can you see her little heart? I'm going to clean my brush. And then I want to grab some white. Wet my brush again. Grab a little white. And I want to have the white pretty concentrated and saturated on the end of that brush. And you can see this is a pretty pointy brush. Pretty pointy. So what I'm going to do is just go in and just touch. And give a little polka dot effect. Can you see that? Show you. Let me grab some more of the white. I'm just barely touching and it's making little polka dots and you can get several polka dots out of one run so just all over kind of randomly as many as you want See that? And she's got a little polka dot dress. Kind of like that. Okay, then I want to go back in. I got shoes left to do, so clean her brush off. I'm going to grab a little bit of the black. And I'm going to actually test this since it is so dark. Let's have a little water. And I'm going to just touch our little girl shoes just touch like so and you can see I just want color on that my screen keeps going dark I just want a little color on those shoes next I want to grab some of the clean your brush off and I want to grab some of the orange and I just kind of want to touch her little shoes, give her some cute little orange shoes. So just touch her little ties, give them a little orange effect. This other shoe does not have to be perfect, just sort of highlight and touch there. That's all you want to do. See, that just gives them a little bit of notification there that they're there. Okay, clean your brush, grab some pink. Keep that brush really pointy. Let's give her a little pink heel. A little more color. She's got a little pink bow. This is just really, really easy to, to add this. And you can do this very quickly. And it's very effective. Okay, just like so. That is, we want to add a little bit of a green to her hair bow over here. She's got this little hair bow on. So let's add a little green in her hair. Just kind of follow that little hair bow around and with the little bow there. See that? That gives her a little hair bow, kind of that green color. Add a little bit of that darker shade into the apron to be sure that matches. She's got a little bow down here as well. I'm gonna grab a little pink. And just kind of touch that. Just like so. Okay, so that that is our dolls. That's all that I did to color our dolls. That's it. And they'll dry. Once they are dried, this is what you will have. 
just like this. I did the hair colors a little bit different. I kind of swapped it up. But you can see this is it. These are what they will look like. And I did go in and add a few little clouds kind of in behind them. So clean your brush off good. A little more water. Oh, I wanted to get a different kind of a brush. I wanted to use this kind of square brush here. It's a quarter inch brush. Get your white. And all I did to add the clouds is I just took this quarter inch brush kind of on its flat side and I just sort of dabbed in a cloud type motion. I don't know what a cloud type motion is, but you can kind of see that's what I did. Just kind of randomly took it across and kind of up. Just with my white. Same thing down here, just a few. Just want a few little clouds. And I wanted to keep them pretty white, so be careful the amount of water that you add. Kind of see what I'm doing there. No big deal. It's just, and if there's no, no cloud is the same. No cloud is perfect, so it does not matter how you do it. Let's do an uneven number, though. Okay, just about like that. And there's our clouds, just like that. Okay, the last thing that I did, I want to clean my brush off real quick. Last thing that I did, let's move all these paint brushes out of the way. And... Let's clean up our well, make sure all our water is dried up before we close the door. Clean that up. Let's close our door. We are finished with the watercolor confections. We are finished with the water. Okay, now what I'm going to do is on my outside edge here, I want to add some uh, 3D glass beads and some trim. So what I'm going to do is kind of fill in my little thing here. This is, um, okay, trim number is uh, number, where's your number? Where's your number? Carrie, I can't find the number. Uh, number 583002. Okay, so we got, I'm going to do two, all, let's just do two all the way across. And I may have used a different one of these. I've got several of these. Y'all know Prima made several of these. So I may have actually used a different one on my on my original. But um, Carrie, you've got that number too. So what I'm going to do is just add a little glue to the back of these. And I'm just going to put them right inside my bag. Just like that. Just kind of press them down. Hold them for just a second. Until they catch. Fabri-Tac's going to catch them really quick. So, again, add them right to the inside. Fabri-Tac's going to catch them. Give them a second. I'm going to let them sit there for a minute, and I'll go back. I'll go back and be sure that they've caught. Because you don't want to glue your bag shut. You don't want to glue your pockets shut. Be careful not to let it um, glue your pocket. Just be sure to go back and check it. But I'm just going to, for time's sakes, I'm just going to kind of Add those in there like that. Dry my fingers. And then I'm going to take my 3D gel. Y'all, I'm probably going to be five minutes, so bear with me just a second, please. I'm going to take some 3D gloss gel and scoop some out. This is, this is Finn's new silicone brush that I'm going to be using to scoop these around. So I'm going to add this. A good heaping amount, if you can see here, a good heaping amount here, because what I'm going to do is take my glass beads and butter, and I'm going to add them a pretty significant amount to that. Let's add a little more. And I'm going to stir that around. 
I've got it in a paper plate so it doesn't roll off in the floor. And that works pretty good. But let's get them pretty saturated. I want it. I want to take advantage of all of this. This is going to dry really clear. So get all your beads in there, scooping them around. So now what I'm going to do is just smear them on this outside portion of our bag. Literally, these are going to catch. This 3D matte gel is going to dry and catch this bag. And it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to do it on both sides. It just gives a really nice texture. It looks white now, but it's going to dry totally clear. Just continue to kind of spread it around. Just spread it around. Am I in camera? Make sure I'm in camera. Just spread it down here. It's going to dry clear and um, get a little bit up here. Just kind of have fun with this. It's going to add nice texture and it's going to be really cool when it's dried. We want to add a little bit up here. And I, I wish I could tell you exactly how much I just mixed together here. But you just want to do a heap and scoop. And if you have to add more or whatever, you can do that. But And there, I'm really kind of adding them on pretty thick. It looks really nice when it's nice and dry. And I'll show you in just a minute. I'm going to kind of go across the bottom here and add a few. Get these off the table. If you get the gel on your bag without the beads, totally fine. It will dry. So that's about what I've done there with these beads. You can see on the finished bag what you get. See how these are on the finished bag? And they're, they're totally dry. They are not coming off the bag. Once you're done, if you're a little worried about them coming off, go back with some 3D matte gel or just some regular matte gel or gloss gel, either one, and coat them again to give them a nice um, seal. And that's a, that's a really good thing to do. I did not actually do that to these, but I'm not losing them. So, But to be sure, you might want to seal them. So last but not least, I added a few flowers and some cord. You can see I added some of... Um, this cord, number 576776, this is, of course, Prima's cord. So I want to just pull off some. I don't know, a couple, yard and a half, two yards, I don't know, a little bit. Um, you can do a different amount if you want. And what I did is just kind of pulled these together in half and then folded it in half again. And I actually tied it right around my handle, just like this, tied in a knot first, tied that in a really good knot, and then tie it in a bow. The whole thing is tied in a bow. What I want to do is cut my loops all my loops and you can trim it to even it out or whatever okay I'm getting this on mine this is really wet so I would normally wait for this to dry <laughs> but I didn't so now I got it all over my wrist so but anyway you get the gist of it just kind of add that like so let's move all of our stuff out of the way I did add a little Julie nutting doll and you can just pick one. Just pick a little Julie Nutting doll. I'm not going to color her for time's sakes, but I did the same thing with the exact same, um, the exact same colors that I used for these with the confections. You just want to color her in a little bit. And what I did is I took a little piece of cord, about yay long. Ran it through her little opening there. Tied it in a knot. Just like so. 
And then what I did is I ran it up through the other cord. This is going to be covered with flowers. I figured out how long I wanted her to hang down. And I just basically tied a knot where I kind of wanted her to hang. So just kind of no pains here. And you're going to have some glue on top of it with your flower. So she's going to kind of hang down. Your, your cords can be kind of trimmed to kind of blend in with the rest of them. Your little tails there. She's going to hang down. And we're going to add these flowers. Number 583286. These are from Royal Menagerie. And I'm going to add a blue one. And a pretty purple one. And a little green one. What you're going to do is just take your Fabri-Tac. Add some glue. Glue it right down to your cord. Let this lay flat until it's dried. Pull your doll down so she kind of hangs down there. And that is it. And a substantial amount of glue. You want to be sure it really adheres. So that is it. That's all I did. Take our little cardboard out. Move some of our mess. And that is our finished bag. Right there. Okay, that's it. That's the one we did tonight. And this is the one that we did before. And you can see how I colored her in just a little bit. I just basically colored her dress. And her shoes is all. And you have like a little charm hanging down with your doll. So that's it. That is it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Facebook. Um, uh, Y'all make sure you join us on Tuesday for uh, Frank and also tomorrow for Sharon. And um, that's it for me, y'all. Thank you again so much for joining me. And I will see y'all again in a few weeks. Bye.